I heard it was your 2024 goal to reach your very first pull up. What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. For this week's highly requested video, I'm not only gonna teach you how you can reach your first pull up, but I'm also gonna teach you how you can improve and rep out more pull ups. All right guys, we cannot become demons at pull ups if we do not strengthen our lats and mid back first. I'm gonna show you my top four mid back and lat strengthening exercises. All right guys, so starting off strong, we are gonna do some lat pull downs. All right, let's put it in 35 kg. You can use any grip for lat pull downs. This one's more of a neutral grip where your palms are facing inwards towards each other. I like this better because I feel it a little bit more in my lats as I've said before in my other videos. Also, if you just do like the regular bar that most like commercial gyms have, that's also fine too. I just prefer this because I like feel better mind muscle connection. It's totally up to you though. They're both great. Remember my key tip for this, drive your elbows into your rib cage to feel it better in your lats. All right guys, for our next lat strengthening exercise, one of my favorites, it's a lat push down. So you don't need that long of a bar for this, not nearly as wide as the bars you see on lat pull downs. You just need about a bar about this size. This is perfect. This is also a key lat strengthening exercise to help improve your pull up game. For our third exercise, you're gonna be doing barbell bent over rows, which I find a very underrated exercise when it comes to strengthening and improving your pull-ups. I feel like a lot of people <laughs> ignore their mid-back strength and building the thickness in their mid-back. So with this, both are great for helping with your pull-ups. You wanna do supinated, which is an underhand grip with, with your palms facing the ceiling. You can do supinated to strengthen both your biceps and your mid-back. You can also do a pronated grip, which is great for just strengthening your mid-back and upper back. I'm just gonna use a barbell to show for demonstration purposes. So this is a pronated grip. And this is the supinated grip. This is great for also helping with your chin-ups because your biceps are engaged as well. For our fourth pull-up strengthening exercise, we're gonna be doing inverted rows. This can be done here at a free weight squat rack with a free weight barbell, or it can also be done most commonly at a Smith machine. But I know Smith machines are limited at our gyms and we're always fighting over the Smith machines. So if there's more squat racks, we can just do it at a squat rack and just do it with a free weight. So pretty much an inverted row, exactly like a supinated row, except we're doing it literally underneath the barbell and we're not the one over the barbell this time. And then you can also do pronated grip guys where I place my thumbs where the rough part starts and that's my grip for a pronated inverted row. That would be great if you're getting used to more of a chin-up motion, the supinated inverted row. Pronated inverted row is gonna be more of your modified version of a regular pronated slash wide grip pull-up. So this will strengthen your actual pull-ups right here. Remember, those four exercises that I showed you, you should be implementing in your routine at least one to two times a week, and then you'll become better and better, stronger and stronger, eventually reaching your first pull-up, if not repping out more pull-ups. Now that we've gone over back strengthening movements, it's time to get into our actual pull-ups here. The form and how to position yourself on the pull-up bar. We have our pull-up bar right here. We have all the different grips, my favorite type of pull-up bar, okay? Because it literally has everything. Tip number one, guys, we're gonna climb up here, okay? This is how I climb up because I'm short. We'll start here with the more like neutral grip. Most people do dead hangs, right? But you see when you do a dead hang, do you see how I'm kind of swaying back and forth? Yeah, that's how you're gonna swing when you do a pull-up like this. Like you'll notice people swing when they do pull-ups like that and they're swinging back and forth and you see how it tires you out? Like I'm swinging and I can, and then when you're tired because you're fatiguing because you're swinging, you get less reps in, right? Or maybe not even a rep at all because you're literally trying to control your swinging. To prevent that, I have a tip for you. 
that I feel like not a lot of people tell you. Okay, so we're gonna engage our core. Not a shocker when it comes to MDJ, okay? How I always say, flex the core, imagine you're gonna get punched. That's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna show it from the front angle. So, this is swinging with a dead hang, right? You see how I'm swaying back and forth? Right, there's like no core control. Let me show you when I tighten my core. Do you see that? Do you see that, guys? Barely any swing, if not a swing at all because my core is tightened and I'm actually, instead of just like dead hang straight, you can see the difference when my core is engaged because my feet come out just a little bit, like almost like a little bit of a curve, not a full C, like my body's not in a full C position, but it's a little bit curved because my core is tightened so that I prevent swing. My next key tip is retracting your shoulders. It's similar to the dead hang. You don't want to just like dead hang there. It's like a domino effect with pull-ups. You fix one thing, the other thing's gonna kind of a little bit fall into place. So once you tighten your core, you're gonna notice your shoulders retract down a little bit, which is what you want because your lats are gonna be engaged when your shoulder retracts down. Instead of you're like you shrugging, you don't want to shrug. So this is shrugging. You don't want that because then it's gonna take much more energy for you to pull yourself up, right? You gotta like retract your shoulders and pull yourself up. It's gonna be much more tedious. So you don't want to shrug. I'm not ready to pull up here because I'm just dead hanging and it's gonna take you know, much more energy and the form might be off. But once I retract, okay, do you see that? My lats are automatically engaged when I retract my shoulders down. And then I'm gonna pull up. Let me show it on the bar. So this is what not to do, what I mean. So I'm swinging, I'm a dead hang. You see my shoulders are shrugged. It's gonna take much more energy. You see that? And it's a messy pull up. Versus when we engage our core, retract our shoulders, watch the difference. See that? That's how we're gonna become demons at pull-ups, guys. Those two key things already, your pull-up is gonna become so much smoother. And yes, like I said, this video is about getting your first pull-up, okay? But also for the people that if you already have your first pull-up, but you're like, I can't get more than like one or two pull-ups and plus they're not that smooth, like they're like swingy and messy. These are key tips that are gonna help everyone, beginners trying to get their first pull-up and also people that aren't beginners that are still struggling with repping out pull-ups. Try those two things and I swear you'll notice a huge difference. And for my beginners, always implement those two things even when you're doing things like lat pull-downs, like back strengthening exercises in your back days and stuff like that. Now that we've got the form and positioning down, let's actually move into repping out pull-ups with assistance and then eventually moving on to an actual unassisted pull-up. Key things first, now that you've got the form down, right? You're like, okay, I've kept all these key things in mind. You know, I've been doing all my back strengthening movements. I've got the positioning on the bar, like in terms of the form, I've got it down. Now you're like, where do I go from here? You wanna start with an assisted machine, okay? The assisted machine is gonna be your best friend for a long time until you can move on to banded pull-ups, okay? Which is like a little bit less resistance. Pretty much it's moving on from most resistance to the least resistance to eventually completely unassisted. That's how it goes in terms of like strengthening your pull-ups, right? So this is the assisted machine. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get used to the reps on this machine first. So when it comes to the weight, right? You're confused. So it's like, oh, do I go light, lightweight with an assisted machine or do I go, do I add like pounds to this? Cause it can be confusing, right? If you haven't used it before. So if I wanted to remove 30 pounds off of my own body weight when being pulled up, I would put the pin in the 30 pound mark because that's gonna remove 30 pounds from my own body weight. And therefore I'm only pulling up 100 pounds, if that makes sense. So one knee, grip with both hands, the other knee, and then you're ready. Remember guys, you can use code MDJ for all your Ghost supplements. It gives you 20% off. And this flavor specifically is on the Ghost site. One of my favorite flavors is Cherry Limeade. I'd literally take it in the hydration packets too. And these run through my veins, I'm telling you. 200 milligrams of caffeine. Oh my gosh, it saves my workouts when I'm exhausted. Once you've gotten used to assisted pull-ups and you're doing these regularly, you can now move on to banded pull-ups. You've graduated guys. Congrats. This is how you set up banded pull-ups. You're gonna go to the middle bar. You're gonna swing it over. Now it looks like this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this through this loop here that I've opened up with my fingers. And then I'm gonna pull it down once it's through the loop. And we have our foot holder here. 
Same thing with being careful on the assisted pull-up machine. Me itching my ear. We're also gonna be careful with the band. Get someone to help you if you need. Like I, I know some people, their foot gets stuck or they, they have trouble putting their foot in, right? You probably need someone there to, I guess, spot you and help you put your foot in and remove it so it's safer. But this is how you can get in it if you're alone. So you take it. It looks a little bit funny. But you see, I just put my foot in here like this. Once you have your foot in, it just needs to be one foot. You're gonna drop and still keep those cues. Tight core, retracted shoulders, up, up. So once you're done, be careful, okay? You're gonna lightly take your foot out. Be careful, because it can flick at you. And then you're done, Zo. you're out. But yeah, that's, that's banded pull-ups. You can do banded chin-ups with that as well. So I was doing obviously the pull-up grip. But if you're still getting used to the pull-up motion, the easier form of a pull-up is basically a chin-up. So it's supinated, right? And you're gonna do chin-ups, it's more bicep engagement. So you have more muscles engaged versus just your lats. So you can start with assisted chin-ups, move on to banded chin-ups, and then assisted pull-ups, banded pull-ups. Also, when it comes to banded pull-ups, this is a thicker band. There's even more thick bands than this. This, I would say, is a medium band. There's also thinner bands. So you can start with a really thick band, move on to a medium resistance band, and then keep going lighter, which they'll get thinner and thinner, meaning it's less and less resistance, meaning it's more and more your body weight that you're pulling up. So that's a good thing with bands, too. You can get like a set of bands, thick, medium, thin, and then you can keep lowering the resistance of the band, getting a thinner and thinner band as you get better and be better with your pull-ups. Now, we've moved on to the final boss, the pull-up. Keyword, unassisted pull-up. Final boss mode, okay? Everything that you've practiced, you're doing your assisted pull-ups or your banded pull-ups twice a week. You're doing your back strengthening exercises one to two times a week. You are regularly practicing is what I'm saying and regularly strengthening your back and your pull-ups. Now you should be ready and prepped to get one pull-up, if not multiple pull-ups. And this is what it will eventually look like. All right, guys, that concludes my pull-up tutorial slash pull-up crash course for beginners or non-beginners. I hope you guys enjoyed it, you found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to run any more tutorials for any sort of upper body exercises or lower body exercises. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.